In this video, we're going to explore the generic equipment module instruction and the equipment module template that's provided as part of the Library of Process Objects version 5, which is used by PlantPX version 5 systems. We're going to start with an introduction to what a generic equipment module is. But before we do that, we just want to highlight about process controllers. Process controllers are a specific set of controllers in our Compact Logix 5380 range and Control Logix 5580 range. They have all the features of our non process controllers plus enhancements for process applications. Things such as embedded built in instructions optimized for process applications, organization, ownership, and arbitration, sequence manager embedded process instruction cyber diagrams, and many other things. Generic equipment module instruction and equipment module template is all about filling the sequence implementation gap. It is a template for implementing sequence logic within your system that is hard coded in a process controller and is only available to use in our process controllers. It allows you to implement ISA S88 equipment modules and sequences in non-batch systems. It provides a fully customizable state model. So you can have up to 32 different states and for each state you can give them their own name. You can define when that state is available to be entered or transitioned into. And you can define when that state can be exited or transitioned out of. It greatly simplifies implementing equipment modules and sequences. The template is deployed using Studio 5000 Application Code Manager and provides the controller code that you fill in with what needs to happen in each state. A HMI symbol and faceplate that allows the operator workstation user to monitor and control the equipment module from the operator workstation. A HMI and controller code interface for handling any parameter values that the equipment module needs and any report values it needs to make. It supports up to 48 parameters and 48 reports. It provides error proofing for number values, supports selection of a defined set of options and supports string values. It provides the ability to define default values of parameters, snapshot their values and be notified if they change. It also provides the ability to control which parameters can be changed and optionally limit how much they can be changed from their original snapshot value. So let's have a look at that equipment module in action. So here is my demonstration plant PX system where we're going to look at an equipment module. Now I'm simulating this pre-mixer using another piece of software in our range, Emulate 3D. So I've built an Emulate 3D model of my batch tank plant using the tanks and pipes catalog. Um, and it is simulating that process and providing the IO to my plant PX controller um, for each of the parts of the batch tank area. We're looking at the pre-mixer, so We'll zoom in there and then switch back to the pre-mixer operator workstation display. So let's have a look at an equipment module. In the pre-mixer, we have an agitator. This is being controlled by a plant PX motor instruction. And for this agitator, we'd like some sequence control um, to control it into different states. And for that, we have used the equipment module template provided in the library of process objects. Here's our HMI symbol for the equipment module. And when we click on that, it brings up the equipment module faceplate. The equipment module has four different states in our case, a state called off, a state called low speed, a state called high speed, and a state called weight based. Now, when those states are available to be entered and when they're available to be exited is all configured in the logic for the equipment module. The equipment module then uses some of the plant PX instructions. It monitors and controls them. And the ones that this equipment module use can be seen 
from the organization ownership and arbitration tree view. If you want more details about organization ownership and arbitration, please see my other YouTube video that goes into detail. As we can see at the top of the tree here, this Agoma module um, uses the agitator. It also monitors the limit switch so that if the limit switch is too low for this premixer, it can take the correct action. And it also uses the weight of the premixer for controlling the agitator in the weight based mode. OK, let's start then with looking at the parameter capability that we provide in the equipment module faceplate. From the faceplate, uh, we have a button here to show the parameter display. And this particular equipment module has only been configured with two parameters. For each parameter, you can give a friendly name to the operator. Um, you can define what the default values are. Um, you can provide value entry and you can see you have units here. And you can also snapshot values. The snapshot value is a value that's used when the equipment module um, is running in any state apart from the off state where we're going to have to change the parameter values. But you have complete control over this when you create your equipment module. When I select a value here, you see that you have a limiting, which you define in the configuration um, so that you can limit what the operator can enter. At the moment, you can see we currently have a value of 200 and 400 in the snapshot. I can change this. So let's say we're going to put uh, 190 into this value here. 380 into this value here. And then let's say we'd like to update the snapshot with those. As you can see, the snapshots don't change. So if I run the equipment module, the snapshot value will be the values that are used. I can also set those parameters back to the default values. So let's look at this equipment module in action. Now, the first thing we notice is, is that we have not acquired our children. So the equipment module uses the organization ownership and arbitration framework, um, which we've detailed in another video. Um, and it's using this for um, acquiring the devices it's going to control um, and also monitoring their status to make sure that everything's healthy um, and alert the equipment module if anything changes, a device say fails or has an issue. At the moment, the devices are not acquired. So if we go and have a look at the agitator, we can see that this is in operator mode. It's locked in operator mode. Um, you know, it's not being acquired. And if it was acquired, it would be in program lock mode and owned by the equipment module. So let's start by trying to acquire um, all the devices for this equipment module. Now, the first thing we notice is that we now have an issue. The equipment module has tried to acquire all the devices um, and it can't. You know, something's not available for it to own and we have a child not usable. The equipment module makes use of the organization ownership and arbitration framework and that allows us to make it very easy for the user to understand which device is not available that it needs. And this is done by bringing up the tree view for the equipment module. So we bring up the tree view, we can see the agitator equipment module at the top here, and then we can see that this particular device, the agitator itself, has an issue. What does the symbol mean? Well, this is displayed in the help. So here we can see that the object is not usable by the parent. This is telling us that the object is not acquirable because it's already it's locked in a different mode. I can't acquire it. We can see the detail of this by looking at clicking on the actual object itself. So if I click on the object, I bring up the faceplate for the object, and then we can see that this is in operator mode and locked in operator mode. Locking something in operator mode prevents it being put into program mode, which is a requirement for the acquire logic. So to solve this problem, we can simply just put it back into operator mode rather than locked in operator mode. As soon as we do that, then the device is acquired by the equipment module into program mode and locked into program mode. And this equipment module is now the owner. You can see that from the ownership tree by highlighting over this device. And there we go, we can see that this is now owned by this equipment module. 
So the equivalent module now owns the devices that it needs to. Ownership only applies to devices that are controllable, devices which are monitor only, don't have owners. And this equipment module is currently in the off state. So we can see that it's in the current state of off. The off button is disabled because we're in that state. We can see what the previous state was, and we can see that we can have diagnostic messages telling the user what's going on. So currently we're in the off state and we're ready to change to a different state. So let's do that. Let's go into the low speed state by selecting the low C button. When this happens, you'll see that all the buttons become disabled. And then once it, the equipment module is ready to move to a different state, the state sets are available to go into become enabled. So you can now see that we can only go into off and high speed from the current state that we're in, which is the low speed state. You can also see the agitator is running slow um, and the equipment module log sequence logic inside the controller has told the agitator to go into the running slow state. If we switch back to our Emulate 3D model, then we will see that the agitator is running in the slow mode. So let's move to the high speed mode. So again, as we select that, the button is disabled whilst it's moving into high speed, and then whichever mode you're allowed to go into while in high speed become available. In our case, just low speed and off. We can see that the agitator is now running fast, and the text is running fast. So let's switch to the off state. Okay, and we can then go and check Emulate 3D. We can see here that it is now currently off. And let's go to the weight-based state. So the weight-based state um, is where we're using the parameters for our equipment module. This is where we will monitor the weight um, coming in. Um, and if it's fast, higher than the 50 kilograms, it will run the agitator at low speed. If it's higher than 200, it will run it at high speed. Yeah? And if it's less than 50, the agitator won't run. So let's put this into weight-based mode. We'll see that when we're in weight-based mode, our only option is to go back to the off state. If we now go into the parameter display, we'll see that the parameters now are no longer changeable because they're being used in the weight-based mode. We also see the agitator is not running, and that is because the actual weight is currently less than 50 kilograms. So that's a demonstration of using um, the equipment module faceplate to control the mode um, and which modes are available and at what point is all completely configurable um, within the implementation of the equipment module by the implementer. So let's now show doing some fault diagnostics using um, the equipment module. So a good example here would be an IO fault for the agitator. So Let's get the agitator into high speed mode. So currently the agitator is not running. So I'm going to put it into high speed mode. Switch back so that you can see the agitator is now running at high speed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create an IO fault on this device. So we now have an IO fault. So we now have an IO fault. Um, which has generated an alarm which I've just silenced so that you can continue to hear me um, and you can see that that's caused a number of issues and alarms being displayed on the screen here. Now it might not be immediately obvious to the user of this equipment module you know what's going on you can see the equipment module is showing that there is a child alarm but again the equipment module framework uses the organization ownership and arbitration framework um, to make it easier for the user to understand you know, what problem is, you know, what does this equipment module need and what's going on. So by bringing up the tree view, we can see um, what this Agitate equipment module is using. Uh, it is using uh, these devices here um, and it's this particular way scale that's causing the issue. It has a um, double explanation mark, which is an urgent alarm present. We can click on that. Um, weight input to actually see the detail there. So we can see that the detail is that we have an input failure 
causing the issue. Um, and that is shown in different places in the tree because this weight is actually used by multiple different parts of the system. It's used by our agitate equipment module, but the charging equipment phase also uses the weight for working out how much weight has been added. So we can now acknowledge this alarm from this um, weight directly, but using organization ownership and arbitration, we can also acknowledge the alarm at the equipment module. And by doing that, we acknowledge the alarm for the equipment module and all its children. So I'm going to do that, acknowledge it here, and you will see that the input failure alarm is acknowledged as well at the same time. So now let's remove the input failure alarm. So we now remove the IO fault. We can see that the agitate equipment module is healthy. It is running the agitator at high speed. If we go back into emulate 3D, you should see that that is running. The process is following. Um, but from the tree, we can also see that we have still an issue for our charge, which we will go and resolve by bringing up the faceplate for this charge equipment phase and acknowledging that. And then everything is back to healthy. So that was a quick review of equipment modules from a user point of view. Please um, have a look at our videos about organization, ownership and arbitration and equipment phases. Thank you.